This is Ava Jarvis with Solo Boarding, and now we are returning to our Let's Play of the Doctor Who Solitaire Story Game. We are facing a mercenary leader and three of his men. But let's cover what has happened before. We woke up in the TARDIS after regenerating. We are the, we are the ninth Doctor. We found our sonic screwdriver, though not our psychic paper. We landed our TARDIS in 1930s Earth in New York. We met Tallulah after a bout of relaxing that didn't go well. We ran into a businessman, and then we ran into mercenaries in 1930s New York. We have no idea why they're there, but let's go ahead and try to talk to them anyways. So as you see here, we have several options here. We can talk to them, we can run away, evade, we can fight them, we can surrender, or we can hide. So I'm going to, because we have two charisma here, if we look at the character sheet, we have a charisma from the doctor and we have a charisma from Tallulah. We are going to go for that charisma role and we are going to see if we can talk to them and not get into trouble. So charisma is a trait. So we are going to be rolling against a trait. So that means that we take, we have target numbers here, as you can see. So basically we roll 2d6, we add any charisma that we have. We've got two charisma, so that's plus two to our roll. And then we follow the instructions of the rolled number with its bonus. So let's do a roll of 2d6. Whoa, that's an 11 plus two more is 13. So 11 plus. You manage to convince the mercenaries to leave you alone, and they depart with a cruel smile. Interesting. So we, we, we know we've got mercenaries running around for whatever reason, but we don't know. We don't know what else is going on. Possibly we should have hidden from them and then tried to follow them, but we didn't. We tried to talk to them instead. That was probably not the wisest choice in the world, but hey, at least we didn't get thrown into combat. Although sooner or later, I will need to show you guys what combat looks like in the Doctor Who universe, and we will need to deal with this. But don't worry, there's, there's plenty of opportunities for that to happen. So now we are going to start turn three. We still know nothing about the enemy so what we are going to do is we are going to go for the explore action again since we don't know what's going on. We roll 2d6 and add plus one for each tracking so let's roll 2d6 and see what happens. A four plus one tracking from the doctor is a five companion in trouble of course so let's go to e002 the companion in trouble paragraph Tallulah has wandered off and found trouble we don't have companions we have an ally and so we're going to get separated from our ally we roll 1d6 for the selected companion ally which is Tallulah and we get a 1 there is the enemy is not revealed yet we don't know what's going on so there's no enemy revealed so we go to E002A separated you have become separated from your companion or ally if they are already separated so in this case all that's happened is that we now have two groups we have the doctor and we have Tallulah and they are going to need to either spend an action to move together again or we can have we can take advantage of this and have two action phases but unfortunately also two encounter phases in one turn 
So our explore action has resulted in separation. And that was the action for the turn. And now we have two encounters that are going to happen. So Tallulah's encounter is going to be here, 2d6. We're on turn three, so seven plus is an encounter. And she gets an encounter, which is a character encounter. All right, not too bad. So let's go back to A443 and roll on the character line. Six. Who does Tallulah meet? Tallulah meets a reporter. A nosy reporter. Roll 1d6. We have a... Ooh, we've got an interesting one. We've got Kathika, CE 087. All right, so Tallulah has met Kathika. A tough but inquisitive young black journalist working on a satellite channel. I, I, don't, I, I don't think that exists in 1930s New York, but let's roll with it. Um, let's assume there's some sort of time distortion going on or something. This is, after all, Doctor Who. Kathika has brains four, brawn four, bravery five, aware, bureaucrat, computers, thief. She joins as an ally, but let's see here. I can try to make her a companion, but I'm not there, so that will have to come later. So, Tallulah encounters Kathika, and... So Kathika is now an ally. Brains roll for Kathika with a plus one bonus. So we're rolling against the quality brains. So with a plus one, we're trying to roll under or equal to five on 2d6. She doesn't know anything. So we do not roll for a plot event. The doctor encounter now. So let's roll. The doctor does not have an encounter. The doctor is just wandering around. So now we've got two parties. We've got Tallulah and Kathika and the doctor. So let's take advantage of that and for a while have two actions since there are two groups and two encounters. This will presumably get us to somewhere faster or you know, just result in a lot of chaos. But hey, this is what Doctor Who is all about. So the Doctor action. The Doctor chooses to explore. We go back to exploring. We have one tracking because there's only the Doctor. So we roll 2d6. So 9 plus 1 is 10. You either discover clues that need investigating, see our 306D next turn if you wish, or you can make if you can make a successful move action next turn, then roll for a location event. So this is very promising. This means that we can investigate or we move to an actual location instead of wandering around in generic 1930s Depression era New York. Tallulah and Kathika will also explore. They don't have tracking, so this will just be a plain 2d6 roll. A 6. Nothing unusual. Things are about to probably get pretty exciting, though, because we are going to have our encounters now. Doctor Encounter, rolling 2d6. The Doctor does have an encounter, and it is another character. So let's go back to Earth and roll on the character line. Four, local police. 
You encounter local law enforcement officers. Roll 1d3 plus 1 to see how many you encounter. So there are three. Three officers. Okay, we can evade. We can talk. Let's try to talk. We're all about the talking. Talk, 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 talk. We talk to them. We make a charisma roll. We haven't done anything nefarious, so there's no negative factors to our roll. Uh, so we roll 2d6 and add our one charisma for an 11. 11 plus. The constables declare that you have a common cause and join you as allies. Roll for a plot event. Okay, so we've got we've got a bunch of allies now. We have oh there are three of them, so we have we are gathering a lot of allies. This is the good this is what I like about talking to people. They can like join you and help you fight off Daleks and I'm not saying they're like meat shields exactly, but yeah, sometimes that's what they end up being. Just to be, you know, frank about it. All right. We are gathering allies left and right. So, and we roll for a plot event. That means we roll on the plot line down here. So we roll 1d6. We get a 3. Strangers. Plot. Plot. You discover there have been mysterious strangers seen in the area. If you have two aware or make an aware nine roll, we have one aware. Either reveal the enemy or gain plus one DM. So we have a chance to reveal the enemy without encountering the enemy. This is good. Um, usually when you encounter the enemy, combat happens. And we have more than enough time for combat to start happening. So, let's see here. If during an enemy encounter you must roll to see if an ally becomes an enemy, subtract one from that roll. You may investigate as an action next turn. So the doctor's got a lot of, a lot of possibilities here. Let's try to make the aware nine roll. So this is... A tr this is a trait roll, so we are going to roll 2d6 and add our one aware. And we've got, we made it. We made, uh, we made it with a value of 11, so we've rolled equal to or above, so we reveal the enemy. Uh, getting plus one DM, the DM is defeat modifier, and uh, you can't really gain those before you know the enemy. So now we have no choice but to reveal the enemy. And in order to reveal the enemy, you roll on the enemy line. So this is good. We are revealing the enemy without engaging in combat just yet. So they don't know that we're here, but we know who they are. And the enemy here, here's the enemy line. And we are going to roll 1d6. We get a one. Interesting. So who is our villain? Our villain is the cult of Scarrow. Which means Daleks. Yep. Predictable. Although this is much better than when I've encountered the beast. You, you, you do not want to encounter the beast. This is much better. Anyways, the Cult of Scarrow. You have encountered the mythical Cult of Scarrow. Ooh, DM minus two. That means that there's a minus two modifier to the defeat modifier. So it means that it's harder to it's harder to defeat them. So you'll we'll come to what defeat modifiers mean when we talk more about goals. So They've got some goals. We don't know the goals yet. We will have to have uh, plot event, further plot events to reveal those. Let's see here. We've not encountered them. We just know that it's the Cult of Scarrow. Established by the Dalek Emperor as a secret order, 
these four Daleks were given orders to get inside enemy mines and predict their opposing strategies. These Daleks have even been given names. They, oh, they, Just, Khan, and their leader, Black Dalek Sek. Each member of the cult is armed as usual with a deadly laser. So if we do meet them, we've got some options, but let's not worry about that now. We now know that it is the Cult of Scarrow. So that was exciting and highly useful. We've got five allies. We are split up into two groups running around. The next time, the next turn, we'll want to, we'll want to explore those clues, I think, with the police officers and remain split up from Tallulah and Kathika. But let's see how Kalu Tallulah and Kathika are getting along. Who do they encounter? Well, the mercenaries are possibly working for the Daleks? That sounds bad. But let's roll for Tallulah and Kathika's encounter. They do not have an encounter. Excellent. So it's turn four and we now know who the enemy is. Now the thing about knowing who the enemy is is that you now need to discover their goal. Now after you've just revealed an enemy or you've encountered the enemy and now you either way you now know who they are but you don't know what they're doing, your next plot event will actually be a goal event i.e. revealing the goal of the enemy. So what we want to do is to do everything in our power to provoke plot events to happen so that we can figure out what the goal of these of these Daleks are. We have two choices. We can go here or we can roll for a location event. Location events are not exactly rare but they have to happen as a result of another action or encounter or whatever. They're, they're, they're hard to get to just like anything specific is in this game so I think we will take it up on that move action. Um, so turn five, doctor action, move. So we roll for a location. So we come back here and there's a location line down here and we do a roll and we get a one. The enemy base. Well, this is extremely interesting. You have discovered the location of the enemy base. If the enemy are Dalek, see E146 instead. So let's go to E146. This event is only possible if there is no enemy yet or if the current enemy has been identified as the Daleks. We have identified them as Daleks. If you can make an aware 7 roll, you recognize it as a Dalek City, gain plus 1 DM. We're going to roll 2d6 plus 1 for our aware. And we do not recognize it as a Dalek City. We do not gain plus 1 DM. Basically, we don't recognize it as a Dalek City. And we just basically walk happily on by. We don't get to roll any of this interesting stuff and that is that's that's a little sad. Do we want to use a luck point to make it? Uh, we're probably going to need our luck points for more important things later on like like I don't know surviving. What do Tallulah and Kathika do? This is interesting because they're separated from the doctor we are going to have them move to rejoin the doctor. Let's go back to our available actions and look into detail at the move action. A move action can be used for several purposes. Okay, we want to join them back together. And wow, there's a lot of tracking in the doctor's group. Um, even if the 
so so we're going to roll 2d6 and if the result is 8 plus the groups have joined together each successive move action has a plus one bonus if both groups decide they wish to attempt to regroup either group making a successful roll joins the groups together so they're going to try to move they're going to roll 2d6 no tracking Ooh, if they had tracking they would have made it now it's time for encounters the doctor encounter and we are at turn five so things are becoming more dangerous so we've got an event and it is on the event one line things are starting to get exciting there are two there are usually two event lines associated with any adventure on event one line and an event two line so we want to consult the event one line so we are going to roll 1d6 and see what happens event one on a d6 we roll a two entertainment if you know the enemy here see instead e002 we do know the enemy here companion in trouble oh dear this means that we've got a missing policeman so policeman number one actually let's give the name policeman Jake policeman Bob and policeman Tom we are going to select Jake to go on possibly adventure enemy is revealed so we're going to roll 1d6 Companion trapped. Your companion or ally has become trapped by falling boulders, a locked door, or down a pit, and needs to be freed. You need a total brawn of 15 to free the trapped character, who may also add their brawn or make a brawn roll by at least 3. Each attempt counts as an action. The character does not roll for an encounter while it's trapped. So even though they're separated, they're not really separated from us. Jake selected trapped what is our brawn the doctor is six so that's 24 brawn freed by 24 brawn so that was not much of an encounter thank goodness let's go on to Tallulah and Kathika encounter do they have an encounter why yes they do they have an encounter. Oh, this is not good. They are encountering the enemy. Now, if the enemy was not known, we would have gone back to the adventure and rolled on the enemy line to find out who they are. As we have revealed the enemy, i.e. we know who they are, we just refer back to the same enemy. We don't reroll on the enemy line because we already know who they are. So this means that Tallulah and Kathika encounter the Cult of Scarrow. And now we roll 1d6 to see who we encounter. Uh, we don't have a minus one or plus one to the roll because we're on turn five. Rolling 1d6, no modifiers. Three, we encounter Daleks, Jast, and Thay. If you encounter Daleks, roll 1d6 to see if they have anything with them. A one, nothing with them. Choose from the options below. Fight, surrender, evade, hide. She's got running. Kathika's not got running, but Kathika does have thief. I think they're going to evade they're going to need to make their running eight rolls. And because this is running evasion, they must make each roll alone. They don't get to add all of their running together. So Tallulah has plus one to her running because she's got a running trait. So if she makes this, she doesn't make it. So I don't think Kathika will be as cruel as to abandon, abandon poor Tallulah. So they are going to stay and choose another option. I'm going to choose to have them hide. Thief eight rolls. So thief 
works like running, you have to make these rolls alone. So we need to beat eight or better for Tallulah. Whoa, she actually makes her thief roll. What about Kathika? She definitely makes her thief roll. So they are both hiding and there is nothing else associated with the hiding except that that just means that Jast and Thay just merrily roll on by or whatever Daleks do and nothing bad happens to Tallulah and Kathika except that it's probably a good idea to get everybody back together because we've got a really really super duper group here we've got all these allies and it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome and great and we've met Daleks and this is this is turning out to be quite fun I feel that we've covered a enough material for one for part two of this playthrough I don't want to tire people out so I'm just going to leave us wanting more we are on turn six that's the halfway point in our adventure and we've got six turns left well seven turns actually since we're only just beginning our six turns our sixth turn we need to figure out what the enemy is doing and we need to stop them and they're the cult of Scarrow, so this will be interesting. It's going to be harder to stop them than to stop other other races from taking over the world. Or whatever their goal is. They could just be here to exterminate things we don't know yet. This is Ava Jarvis with Solo Boarding signing off. I hope you join us for the next part of our little playthrough. And thank you for watching.